In this video, we are going to install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi. Although you can install Home Assistant on old PC or computers, they are not energy efficient. Unlike Raspberry Pi, which only consumes 50 watt, and since it will be running 24 by 7, it makes sense that you install it on a Raspberry Pi. So in this video, I'm going to show you the simplest way to install it and in upcoming videos, we are going to integrate various uh, smart switches and plugs and also we will create DIY smart switches, plugs and also sensors, for example, motion sensors, gas sensors and uh, temperature sensor, water level sensors, tank sensors. So various other DIY sensor, these will be all DIY. I'll show you how to build that because in past six months I've done all of this and I've made my home smart. So let's get started with the first video of this series, which is installing Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi. So currently I'm using Raspberry Pi 4. Before this, I was using Raspberry Pi 3. I've recently upgraded to Raspberry Pi 4. But if you have Raspberry Pi 3, it's okay, it works perfectly fine. To install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi, you have to go to the URL, I have mentioned it below, or you can just uh, directly copy that URL, whichever uh, Raspberry Pi you are using, you have to copy that URL, paste it in the browser, and this will start downloading that particular Home Assistant uh, Pi image. Once the image is downloaded, you have to install the Balena HR app on your Windows or Mac PC, whatever you have. And after that, you have to launch Balena HR program. When you launch it, you can click on flash from file since you have downloaded it. Otherwise, you can just copy and paste the URL here and choose flash from URL. So since we have downloaded the image, we'll click on flash from file and then we'll go to downloads and there we have the Raspberry Pi 3 image. So we're gonna choose that, click open and then make sure you have connected your micro SD card uh, to your computer or Mac at this point and then click on select target. You'll see your mass storage media or the SD card right here. You have to select it and click on select. Finally, you have to click on flash and wait for a while. On Mac, you'll be asked for the password. On Windows, you'll be prompted for the USC or the administrator access. So just click on yes and provide the password on your Mac. And this will start flashing the SD card with Home Assistant operating system. Now, once the flashing is complete, your card will be auto ejected. You have to disconnect the micro SD card and insert it in your Raspberry Pi. And then you have to go to the place where your router is located and connect this Raspberry Pi directly through the ethernet cable. Wi-Fi is not going to work with this, so make sure you connect this to your router using the ethernet cable and then power it on and then wait for like a few minutes. And after that, you have to visit the IP address of this Raspberry Pi if you know that if you don't know, you have to visit your router's DHCP settings to find out the IP address of this Raspberry Pi. It should be mentioned as Raspberry or you can also use the Fing app on your Android or iOS device to find the IP address of this Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go connect this to my router and switch it on. So if you can see here, this is Home Assistant showing on my router. So this is the IP address of my Home Assistant Raspberry Pi server. What we are going to do is we are going to enter this IP address in our web browser with port 8123. After some time, it will come online and it will show you preparing Home Assistant like you are seeing on this screen. Now this can take up to 20 minutes and you have to wait for that time. You, If you want to see logs, you can click on this uh, icon and you can see the logs or the changes that are taking place uh, in case if you see any error that are probably due to the internet connection mostly otherwise uh, it's just going to take 20 minutes and it will be online so we need to wait for that time and we'll come back after 20 minutes finally after waiting 20 minutes or plus minus five uh, home assistant is online now now we have to create account so we need to put a name i'm going to put tech course 
and then i have to enter the password so make sure you add a secure password because this will give access to anyone who have your password if it's easy and he is able to crack your password they'll be having the access to your home assistant so make sure it's secure and uh, for now for the testing purposes just to showcase you i'm using a easy password but make sure you use a very strong password click on create account and this will create your home assistant account you have to set your location time zone uh, your metrics once you do that you can do this letter also uh, click on next and then if you want to share some of the data with the home assistant you can choose or you can just click on next and then here you will see all the smart devices or compatible devices or devices that are compatible with your home assistant servers uh, displayed on this panel so you can just uh, click on them uh, if you want to add them right now or you can just click on finish and then add them later on or configure them later on so i'll click on finish since i've already created a lot of sensors and smart switches they are coming right here and uh, you won't have these many devices even though if you have smart plugs or devices installed because uh, they are not compatible out of the box you have to install some of the add-ons uh, and integrations to make them work with home assistant and it's very easy it's not complicated it's all ui based you don't have to go through any you know manual coding or anything like that i will show you step by step instructions on how to do this in upcoming videos so stay tuned uh, at this point the home assistant is installed if you want to add uh, or control your devices you can go to add-ons install add-ons or go to devices and services and start configuring your devices you can read more on home assistant's official website but i'll give you a quick overview of how my home assistant interface looks like and for your information i'm able to access my home assistant instance from anywhere in the world with secure https connection and two-factor authentication i'm going to show you all of this in upcoming part as i am saying again and again so stay tuned and make sure you subscribe and like this video so i'll give you just an overview of my home assistant so i have named it uh, i've basically purchased a domain uh, which cost me like uh, 500 rupees uh, or 10 dollars less than 10 dollars uh, i've uh, you can also buy dot in or some of your local dot uh, us or dot in or dot ca domain which is way cheaper and uh, once you have the domain you can configure that and i have configured smartghar.org you can visit it right now but you won't be able to access it of course because it is secured with two factor authentication so this is my home assistant panel and i can log into this using my secure password this is the two-factor authentication code so i use uh, google authenticator app to authenticate various applications including this one so i'm going to enter the two-factor authenticator code and there it is i'm able to log in and now i have access to each and every smart device that i've installed or uh, made and installed in my home so this is my LG window AC. This is compatible out of the box. Um, and I had to install an integration and I'm able to control it. This is the current power usage that AC is taking, uh, consuming right now. This is not available because I have turned it off uh, due to some issues. So this entity is not available. I can turn it on anytime, but other three lights are available. And uh, here you can also see the current uh, usage of the resources on my raspberry pi 4 so cpu current temperature processor use and everything so this is like how many how much water is remaining in my tank and if the tank gets empty the motor will turn on automatically similarly i have uh, turned on automations uh, for switch off and switch on motors and i can uh, switch off and switch on them anytime like if i want to switch off an automation i can do that directly 
from here similarly this is my bedroom area where i have installed a few devices these are all diy switches that i have installed this is my desktop control switch uh, i had a symphony cooler which was not smart but i have installed some uh, i have installed a diy regulator which allows me to control the speed of my uh, fan and pumps so there are a lot many things you can even measure the electricity usage in your home current usage in real time and monitor your everyday or monthly expenses of power usage so there's a lot to share with you uh, this was just the first step if you are uh, interested in making your home smart make sure you follow our channel and subscribe to our channel also leave a like thank you for watching have a great day